Good evening, good morning, good afternoon. On behalf of the iMove team, I'd like to welcome Christina. She is the project lead, correct? Project lead mm -hmm. for uh, Mahara from Catalyst. And take it away. Thank you so much for the introduction, Carrie. It's nice seeing you all again. And also, hello, Joyce. And um, yes, so this is the repeat session of the session we that started out the iMode um, in parallel to the session that Miriam and her colleagues had. And it is about um, Mahara, the an e-portfolio tool that you can easily connect to Moodle. Um, but I'm not really wanting to talk too much about the tool actually, because I did that in the earlier session today. So you are very welcome to check the recording out for that. Um, because having two sessions, I did do want to do something different. There are a couple of things that, that are very similar, but um, for the majority, I do want to put the focus more on why we would want to work with a portfolio when we already have a learning management system. And um, if you do want to tweet, then you know all the familiar hashtags and I've put the Mahara specific ones there for you as well. So let's get started. And a couple of slides, as I said, for, for those of you who were in my earlier session today, do look familiar. So please just bear with me for a moment. Um, recently, I found the uh, um, uh, the definition for portfolio in the Oxford English Dictionary. And it was actually quite fascinating to look it up and be reminded that uh, the term portfolio is not really a new one, but that it has been around for a long time. Oftentimes these days we talk about electronic portfolios and how they can be or how they can revolutionize learning, but um, the portfolio idea has existed for many, many years. And um, portfolios themselves also in education have been used for many, many years. And just to give you a brief impression, um, they, are, they are three years and in all of them portfolios have already existed, but it is the last one, 1813, that, uh, the, that it was used in the sense that we had in the definition that you saw earlier, namely that it is not just a sample of a person's work, but also shows the achievements they have made in a particular area and showcases uh, competency. So it is quite a long time ago that um, the concept of portfolios came about. But of course, it's also being used in other areas, namely the business area of having a portfolio of your investments. But that's not what we are going to talk about here. We are going to focus on the one for learning. So especially if we think of a portfolio as a case in which we store all our learning evidence and um, pieces of material artifacts to showcase our competencies and our achievements, um, there's always quite a bit of lagging around to do for that. Because with time, these things grow and you, you gain more experience, you have more evidence to share. And so portfolios of the past could be quite heavy. And they could also only be shared with one person at a time, unless you had multiple copies of your portfolio available. And that's where the electronic portfolio comes in really, really nicely, because you can simply um, work on it on your computer. You can also work on it on a tablet or on a mobile device these days and access the same environment um, update your portfolio at any point in time, as long as you have internet access, or if you use a mobile app that also allows for offline access, then you can use that. And um, there's no more running around making copies or dragging a really, really big binder with you to um, a review meeting in order to showcase um, what you have done. And electronic portfolios in that sense are really nice because they are more flexible. You can reuse items from one portfolio in another and um, share that with a completely different group of people. 
And so you can, for example, create a portfolio for classroom purposes for an assignment. And then use some of that evidence that you put in there also in a showcase portfolio at the end of the year. And one of the softwares that allow you to do that is Mahara. Like Moodle, it is an open source software and we are actually celebrating our 10th anniversary this year um, because the project was started in 2006 here in New Zealand um, with a number of universities and um, yeah, has been developed since then primarily by Catalyst, but also with a lot of contributions from people around the world. And that is not just for the code base, but also in terms of um, third party plugins, um, translations, and also support in the community organizing events and such. Mahara started as a personal learning environment and in particular to be complementary to a learning management system. So at the time, so around 2005, um, a lot of universities were already using LMS, um, different ones, some were also already on Moodle, and so they knew how what online learning was and what it could do, but they were missing a component where the learner-centeredness was not yet so possible in the learning management system because there the, S, the focus was of the management of the learning. And so they wanted to have a system where learners were in the center where they could decide what they wanted to share and how they wanted to share it and also with whom they wanted to share it and therefore have a flexible system to allow both um, connection to the learning management system, but at the same time also um, connecting to other people outside of the, the formal education context. And that's where a personal learning environment can come in really nicely, because the, it is up to the learner who, um, what, they, uh, what they want to share and also how they want to organize their learning and their evidence. And so just to give you a brief overview of um, how versatile Mahara is, even just, just when we, sorry, um, even just when we thought it might be uh, just used for learning, meant for personal learning environments. Um, here are a few examples that um, just illustrate in which different areas you can use um, an ePortfolio. And since we don't have time to look at each individual example um, specifically, um, you'll have the link to the um, iMode se uh, session in which you can um, click on the individual examples and then take a look at them, explore them further, click through them. So right now I just want to give you a brief overview of them. So the first one um, is about online identity. Um, we all, these, oh, the majority of us, I guess, um, are present online, can be found online, and with an ePortfolio, we have the control of what we want to present of us and how we want to present um, ourselves to others. And that can then be used for, um, yeah, when somebody kind of wants to employ you, find your profile, you have the control over what is being displayed. And um, that allows you to really share what you'd like to share with others instead of just being found on Facebook or in other sites that um, might be cut off from, from public view. And a portfolio um, allows you to share certain things with others, whereas um, you still keep the confidential things uh, to yourself. Um, Normally, portfolio work is oftentimes regarded as um, individual work, but in Mahara, you can also work collaboratively on portfolios. So you can work on group, group projects. And there's a really uh, nice example that you'll see in the, uh, um, in the link from, from a, a Scottish college. But um, a few years ago, also Carmel High School in California um, had in an English course, and there they were. Uh, there the students worked together on portfolios um, in groups and created their project using Mahara to set up their project websites and present their content. 
And that's a really nice way to work collaboratively on an assignment or to, uh, also on any other project. Um, the example that I put here into the course was around a newsletter that students created at a college and allow the students to come together and put their ideas um, on the table and then work out how they want to present everything. Portfolios have also been used for a very long time um, already in language education and for other in other areas where you want to assess competencies. So language education um, is, or portfolios are really well suited because you can see what you've known at the beginning and what you know at the end of a uh, trimester or semester. And that can be tracked in a portfolio nicely. So writing examples or maybe even audio clips and video clips. And because you have the actual evidence, you can really hear or see how you have progressed rather than just seeing a um, grade on a piece, piece of paper. And uh, competency assessment is also used quite heavily in nursing, for example, um, because the nurses need to have their re-registration done every so often. And with the portfolio, they can really demonstrate what they have learned in the past, how they have progressed, and also um, where they are at with their actual um, behavior uh, towards patients or how they um, do certain tasks so that the assessor can really experience and see what they have done in order to make their assessment. And of course, we can also use portfolios for assignments. Um, in the Mahara community, oftentimes, especially in the beginning, it was kind of um, looked at more, well, we, Mahara is for a personal learning environment, so not really used for assignments because assignments are on the Moodle site um, or any other LMS. But actually, over time, this thinking has changed quite a bit um, because students often do need a motivator, an external motivator to work on something, um, especially if an instructor wants something from them. And um, using portfolios for assignments um, can be one of those things. Instead of just saying you have to create a portfolio um, where they don't necessarily see the purpose of it with an assignment, they can see why they create a portfolio and they also have the result at the end. Um, but with a portfolio assignment, um, there is a bit more freedom in how the assignment is structured. So it's not just write your essay or take a quiz and everybody has the same results. Um, it is more individual. So students can bring in their own voice. Um, they can change the layout of the portfolio if the instructor allows it. And they can really invest themselves into it, but then the instructor can take a look at it and review it. And connected to Moodle, use the same assignment grading methods that they are already used to, like the rubric or um, the marking workflow, submitting assignments that are then locked so students can't change them and so on. Staying in the, or going more into the higher education sector, and towards career progression, um, portfolios can, can also be used really nicely for tracking um, professional progress or project progress. And the example shown here is uh, one from a PhD student who put all her notes and research material and reflections on her progress of her project into a portfolio so that she could share that then with her supervisor. And then her supervisor, because she had access to the portfolio, always knew where her PhD student was up to. And they could even discuss um, the just discuss individual elements directly in the portfolio instead of having to go to many different places. So Mahada is very well suited also to um, aggregate things from different websites, from different places around the internet and also your own computer by uploading it and then curate that content in whichever way you want and use it for one portfolio and then part of that potentially also for another one. It is also very well suited for intern tracking internship progress and internship periods in general um, because 
the students aren't at university anymore or at college, but they are with their um, internship company. But the institution still wants to stay in touch with the students. They still want to keep track of them and see how they are doing. They want to stay in touch with them. And using a portfolio is a nice way of doing that because the students can document how they are doing in their internship. They can reflect on what they are learning and they can get the feedback both from the internship um, company and also from their instructor. And so really keep in touch with everybody. And portfolios are also really good for career progression and for uh, um, and applying for a job because um, they do show off what you have done and how you have done it. Um, a resume only says, says so much about you, you yourself. Um, and we all know that when you are uh, an A at one university, it might be a B or a C at another university. And so those gradings are, can be somewhat arbitrary and don't necessarily really say how you perform under a certain uh, in a certain situation or how you cope in different environments or what your essay actually looked like. Whereas if you have a portfolio, then you can really see and make up and the employer can really see what you have done and make up their mind, whether that is what fits in with um, the company or whether they'd still like to see something else. And so on software development, for example, open source developers are in a really great advantage for that because they have their portfolio online um, in the sense that they can share code examples and they can share the projects that they have worked on um, because they are all in the open. So even um, an account on a um, code control, um, version control system in, in Git um, or any other system can be part of the portfolio because that really shows off what you have done and also how you've worked together in, in a team. And portfolios have also been used for a number of years already for tenure and promotion and are now in some institutions more slowly and others um, more quickly um, moved into the electronic age. Because with, like with any other evidence collection, um, collecting evidence for tenure and promotion is quite, uh, involves quite a bit of time and needs to be done over a period of time. So it's not really something you do in one go, but you should be doing continuously. And an electronic portfolio can help with that because as soon as you finish um, a paper, for example, you could put the reference in your portfolio or you could even put the article in your portfolio and then reflect on that and see where you want to go next or tie that paper together um, in the context of other papers so that people can see why you've written it where, it, where the idea came from and how it relates to the rest of your research. Um, we are very fortunate to have um, Keith Lander share his tenure portfolio, which you will see under uh, when you go to this link, to get an idea also of how you can change things up. Because tenure portfolios are pretty much um, always the same, so you have certain uh, categories that you need to fill in. And with the electronic portfolio, Keith had the opportunity to show things differently, to really also bring multimedia evidence in there to work with pictures and his reflections and not just um, stick to the very dry format that was given to him by the committee. And last but not least, portfolios are really great for professional development, keeping track of it and then reflecting on what we have learned in it. And um, all these things can be done within one portfolio system, but you see that there are many, many different purposes and many different ways of creating a portfolio working with it and um, still having the same evidence that you, that you collected, but use it in different ways. And sometimes you might not even want to share it with anybody. So, so much for portfolio examples and kind of ideas of how you could use Mahara in um, either for in formal educational contexts or 
um, other areas where you are looking for your own professional uh, development, professional growth, or maybe even in areas where you have extracurricular activities like student projects when they want to get together to um, organize an event or to share um, things around a club that they are having and um, bring that into their volunteer experience. And please do feel free to post any questions that you have in the chat or grab the microphone and interrupt me. So now let's actually take a look, because we are in I mode, um, let's take a look at um, how Moodle works together with uh, Mahara. And um, that was actually already pretty much from the beginning that we can work with Moodle and Mahara together. And that's why we even have a um, new name coined, uh, namely Mahoodle. And that means that we can connect Moodle with Mahara and have a two-way conversation between the two. And this two-way conversation can happen in, in a number of different ways. The first one is that we log into authentication. And the connection is currently still done via MNET, so Moodle networking. But in the future, it will be switched to web services. And the Mahara team has already been making big strides in that this year. And currently, we have um, already two, no, three items in, in review that we are looking at, namely um, making SAML authentication the core part of Mahara, which is important for, for the web services connection, and then also making uh, or having created a connection manager, which allows us to set up the connection between two different services more easily. That is currently um, both in code review and will be integrated uh, hopefully um, later in the year with the 16.10 release. And we are also looking at removing MNET from, or we are working on removing MNET from the Mahada Assignment Submission plugin to, again, make it easier in the future, not having to rely on MNET, and then eventually being able to go away from MNET altogether to something that is more of a standard. So when you want to go from Moodle to Mahara, what you can do is um, after you've set up uh, MNET and you'll find the link um, how to do that in the course, is that you that a learner can move uh, assignment files, form posts, glossary entries, and also badges to Mahara. And also other things, uh, chats, for example, as well, and um, any other items that third-party plugins might allow you to move. Badges can't be moved directly to Mahara, though. Um, they will always need to go through the backpack at the moment. Or if you have an open badge passport account, you can also um, pull down your badges from there into Mahara. And all you have to do is for the assignments for imposing and glossary entries to take those as an example. Um, have your Moodle and Mahara set up so that um, Moodle can export to a portfolio, and then wherever you can export content, you will see the export to portfolio link. Then there are a couple of steps you need to go through, deciding on whether you want to export it as HTML or as link to a file, um, which just means um, HTML will always end up as a journal entry in Mahara whereas lead to a looks into where it can put it properly and in terms of files it will uh, it puts the the um, file directly into the files area for example and then once you've exported your portfolio or the, the content to your portfolio you can view the file in this case directly in Mahara and don't need to have downloaded it first to your computer and then upload it again to your portfolio. So it's a bit more of a seamless um, connection between the two. And for files, you might think, well, hmm, doesn't really matter too much. Um, I have the file on my computer already anyway, so might as well just drag and drop it into my portfolio. Um, but it is really important for form posts and also glossary entries. 
because if you wanted to showcase them in your Mahara portfolio, you'd either have to copy and paste them, or you'd have to make a PDF out of them or an image and then send that over to the portfolio. So for these ones, it is really nice to have the connection between the two systems. And you can also that way also keep your own content to yourself in your portfolio, because you never know when um, a teacher might delete the content in a course and therefore you're not having that available anymore. Now, if we look at the other way around, namely going from the portfolio from Mahara to Moodle, we can do so for assessment purposes. And that's where the um, Mahara Assignment Submission plugin comes in really nicely. Again, the link is in the course for you to check out. And what it does is that um, you as instructor can use the regular Moodle assignment that you uh, that you know very well and can use the settings in there and uh, to set it up so that students can submit their portfolios in it. So instead of uploading a file or writing an online text, they link to their portfolio that you will then have access to. So if you're looking at the student here, once the assignment is set up, they can see their entire portfolio. In this case, we have a bunch of pages and also a collection. A collection is really um, just a yeah, collection of pages so that you have a navigation between the individual parts of your portfolio, making it more cohesive than having to share individual pages only. And so a student uh, can select the portfolio they want to share. And depending on the activity, it will either be locked or the student can still continue working on it. Locking a portfolio is really nice um, when you do have a deadline for a portfolio and you want to assess a portfolio in the state um, on that day because a student can't make changes to most of the artifacts. Um, not locking a portfolio also has its advantages because that can be used really well for continuous um, assessment or continuous feedback. Um, for example, one organization that we work with here in New Zealand, um, they ask their students to start creating their portfolio at the beginning of the semester or at the beginning of the term. And then they do want to check in with them in regular intervals. And having the student already submit the portfolio at the beginning but leave it unlocked allows the instructor to simply go into the Moodle gradebook and click the link to the portfolio. And so they can easily see where their students are at instead of having to log into Mahara and looking for the portfolio there, which is not horribly difficult either. But oftentimes instructors um, like working in one environment and they are used to the gradebook. And so that makes it easier for them to just check out um, the portfolio directly there. And once you click on that portfolio link, you are automatically logged into Mahara and you can view the portfolio. So you don't have to jump into Mahara first in order to look at the portfolio. You can give feedback on the portfolio. You can give feedback on individual artifacts. Um, you can go back and forth between Moodle and you can also use your regular Moodle grading methods. So you can put a grade in here, you can give feedback here in Moodle, and you can also use the rubrics in Moodle um, so that everything then shows up in the Moodle gradebook too. So kind of looking at um, Moodle and Mahara together and the examples that you've seen and the what you know from Moodle, um, we, we do have these two different sides if we look at Mahoodle together, namely that Mahara is yours and Moodle is theirs. So that um, is what a community member in Germany once said. And I really like that way of thinking about it for the most part. It's not always true because every teacher can also do very uh, learner-centered um, teaching in Moodle these days and make it really interesting and also create portfolios in Moodle. But generally how um, an LMS is used is that it is there for the teacher, that the teacher puts out um, 
an assignment um, makes that available to the student that the teacher says in which form discussion students can participate that they decide what resources are in the course that they get the reports on what the students have done in the course and that they use it for grading so to keep track of the students Whereas Mahada, with the idea of the personal learning environment, is really more focused on the student. So Mahada is there for the student, to help the student organize themselves, um, yes, share content with um, an instructor, but at the same time also be able to set up portfolios for other purposes and use it for their own communicate with other students. And that's why I think these two still hold true for the most part um, and kind of give you a nice idea of who is in control, who can do what, and um, how these two tools might be perceived. And that's what really makes them work well together, because when you use both of them, you really get the best of both worlds. You get the formal management educational context through Moodle, and you get the more non-formal, informal areas where the student has more power to decide what portfolio and how many portfolios they want to set up and so on in Mahara. And yes, you could use one or the other without the other, but together you do have additional powers available for your online teaching or for teaching also with in face-to-face -face courses because you offer students a different perspective um, into their content and you can also allow them to keep their um, yeah to keep their learning artifacts for longer than just a course and really see how it fits into their entire um, learning framework what they can do with it and how they can build on top of what they have already learned in the past And how to set up Moodle and uh, Mahara together? Um, you can find that out in the user manual. And um, there we do link to the MNET setup guide. I must warn you that hasn't really been updated for a long time, but it is still pretty much true. Just a couple of, or the design has changed a bit. And you'll... Um, find how to use Moodle also in the user manual. We are expanding that um, all the time, updated for the um, always current release as well. And um, then in our iMood course, you do find um, the examples that I've briefly discussed uh, today so that you can really take a look at them. And you also find more examples actually in the newsletter that is being published um, every quarter and can see how the portfolio concept, the idea of a portfolio might work for you. And if you have more questions, please feel free to contact me and um, find out more of how you can use Mahara, how it can, what the benefits then also are for connecting it to Moodle or helping you with that. And one thing um, I'd like to mention also, which could be interesting, especially for senior management, is that um, there is going to be an, a, or a field guide for e-portfolios oh, e later in the year, and that is organized by ABLE, um, an organization in the um, in the US that um, works quite heavily around portfolios and related concepts. And there is a field guide in the making um, which touches on many different areas of where portfolios can be used and how they can be useful in higher education. So do watch out for that in the second half of the year, most likely after October or November-ish. Um, the editing process is going to start anytime soon now. Now we have uh, time for questions. Well, Christina, on behalf of the IMU team, I'd like to thank you again. I feel like we're doing a deja vu, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, this presentation on um, Mahara. You know, I have learned more about Mahara this evening 
<laughs> than I could have ever imagined. Um, and I'm sure many of us are going to be uh, exploring the different connections between uh, Moodle and Mahara. So mm -hmm. I'm going to stop the recording in a moment. Feel free to stick around in the room. Mm -hmm. uh, if any questions, now's your chance. Thank you, Carrie. And yes, please do let me know if there's anything in your question. Um, Russell, that's a very good question. So where can students keep their portfolios after leaving the institution? Um, and they can export it. Uh, Mahara supports Leap 2A, which is a um, e-portfolio export standard. And so students could take their portfolio and put it into a Mahara instance that offers um, free access or low cost access for students. There is currently no worldwide Mahara instance that um, just takes in everybody, but there are a few providers that offer the service so that individuals can keep their portfolios there. My preference often though is um, if a university um, or college has set up a Mahara instance that they do consider um, offering their students to keep the portfolio even after graduation um, for a number of reasons. And the biggest one is really uh, to keep alumni um, close to the university. And that is not so much just for alumni and asking them for money, but really to keep uh, the alumni close to the institution, to keep them engaged in any activities that the university or college does. And also allow students, for example, to get in touch with alumni more easily, or uh, have them come back as experts. Because you don't have to search for them on an alumni network, or to ask them that you can join their site or the alumni need to set up alumni need to set up a site themselves first whereas if they can use mahara for that they can talk to each other in groups they can set um, up their own portfolios they can keep portfolios they can expand on what they have already done at university and you as institution can get in touch with them more easily because you simply message them in a system that they still have access to. They don't need to con uh, retain single sign on though. You can easily switch them to a um, manual account so that they would be able to log in without um, having access to any other systems that they shouldn't have access to anymore. And Teresa, yes, that's really good to hear that you'll be keeping your students in an alumni section. So what we've seen in the past is that institutions set up a, or a university set up a different institution within Mahara, because Mahara is multi-tenanted, you can do that very easily. And then um, they know which, which people are alumni so that they can keep them there. And the other advantage is that you can put up notices for alumni on the dashboard that only alumni see or you could even have a different theme for them. And um, you could also have the alumni network administer those accounts so that your regular IT support wouldn't necessarily have to do that. Um, Russell's questions, do many schools institutions have completely non-public Mahara's? I don't know, Russell. Um, I, the institutions that I know, they always have some component of public um, access, um, generally in terms of um, um, making secret URLs for content or for also allowing students to um, publish their portfolios publicly. Oftentimes, the majority of portfolios, though, is uh, private to students and to certain instructors only. So that's why we can't really show all the examples that are out there in the world. We, we all, always rely on people making their examples public. Sometimes that's only for a certain amount of time. Sometimes that is for longer um, in order to, to see them because the majority of portfolios is still very much private. Thank you, Lynn and uh, Joyce. Um, 
Yes, so, so Lynn mentioned Dropbox access. Um, yes, so when institutions um, remove access to certain repositories where files are kept, that can, of course, be, be very tricky for the students to still have their content. So they could, would need to move that uh, to their portfolio. That's why embedding is kind of a blessing and a curse, because embedding is really nice since you don't need to store the files on your um, ePortfolio site, and when you update them, um, they are immediately updated on your portfolio. But it, uh, then on the same side, if you leave an institution where you used a specific uh, repository to which you don't have access to anymore, and all your files left there, then your portfolio might also be quite hollow. So finding a good uh, middle solution is um, necessary there to see what can students store, how we can potentially in the future also more easily um, export that content and say, okay, now put that directly into the portfolio. Thanks for coming again, Colin. Um, and I hope it wasn't too much of the same that you've had already earlier. So Joyce says, it seems to me that batches and portfolios and ongoing flexible short courses for upskilling are all understated by institutions to continue to be a part of people's learning lives. Does anyone know of an institution that is doing this well? That's a very good point, Joyce. And um, the really interesting thing is actually that batches and portfolios are being discussed more and more in the same sentence. Um, because the badges do offer you to kind of see what you have done and they can also link to the evidence and then the portfolio can be used to either store that evidence or um, reflect on the evidence. So kind of having a combination of both is definitely um, something that institutions look more into. Not really having a very good example of um, who does it well, because institutions oftentimes are still exploring the idea of badges. So while they might already be using portfolios, um, getting into badging is still um, more of a yeah is, is still more in the process. Um, though there has just recently been a conference organized by Abel. Um, in Notre Dame, and there Dan Hickey um, presented some of the work that um, his team has been doing in terms of badges, and they are now also looking more into um, how that can be done for um, in, in conjunction with portfolios. So the conference website um, is at this URL and they will also share presentations and the name that I mentioned was Dan Hickey. So you can find him on SlideShare and watch his presentations there and uh, kind of get an idea where things are at for the badging, with the badging community. Yes, and Joyce, you'll probably already know him quite well. And we've also just had a recent talk with um, Nate Otto, um, who's also very much involved in the batching community um, on, a, on a developer level and also conceptual level. And it's very interesting what um, they are currently looking into in regards to learning pathways and um, using that also with the badges and then seeing where and so we are looking into where portfolios can can be part of that um, whether we can share some of the infrastructure or use similar concepts in order to allow for badges also to be used more easily in portfolios. Mahara does have a plugin for issuing badges that is tied to the open badge factory um, that was developed by Descendum, who also developed the um, Open Badge Passport. And so you can issue badges on a manual basis. It is not yet as sophisticated as the um, Moodle plugin um, for issuing badges so that you can 
um, so that you could um, issue badges based on certain actions, but already being able to manually issue badges um, is very nice because then you can integrate it already. And the Open Badge Displayer plugin is now um, integ integrated into Mahara 1604 so that you don't need a plugin anymore in order to showcase your badges. Uh, Russell asks, is there a way to find all portfolio items that have appeared in multiple Moodle assignments? Students getting double credit for a piece of work. Um, no, not really, because um, you can uh, or you don't have an overview at the moment, uh, which portfolios have been um, submitted to what assignment. Um, if your institution has uh, the full text search installed, you can see in which portfolios certain um, artifacts have been used. So you would see a list, um, say, my bicycle image has been used in my employment portfolio, my assignment portfolio, and also my personal portfolio. We oftentimes um, do actually get the, other, the the question for the other way around um, for the assignment submission plugin, and so it was changed to that as well, um, that in the beginning, people could only submit one portfolio to one assignment and not to another until the, the first assignment was, um, was um, yeah, finished with the grading process, and now people do want to be able to submit even the same page to a different assignment. And so there are many different um, ways of yeah, submitting work and making work available in an assignment and many different ways of um, that need to be accommodated. That's why we can lock portfolios or we can also leave the locking of portfolios out. If there aren't any further questions, maybe let's just stop the recording.